because right now, because right at the start, it was actual, you were literally allowed to go nowhere. Yeah. Right? I was in the office on my own, and it was. It felt like I didn't have anything to look forward to. Yeah. And I think that's most people now. They don't have anything else to look forward to other than either getting pissed up in the on house. On the weekend. Or boozing, uh-huh. getting boozed up somewhere else. Um, and again, I haven't got a problem with anyone that does that, but for me, it's just not going to serve me anymore. In terms of what I'm trying to do in my life, yeah. you'd be the same when you got a fight cam coming on and you're yeah. 22. So now it doesn't really make a big difference in your life if you go up. But for someone like me, two kids, wife, building this fucking big thing, trying to have an impact on people, training, trying to stay in shape, I just don't have time for it. So I suppose my advice would be. Hola, mamacita! Here we are, Paul Moore talks shit with me. Talker of said shit, Mr. Paul Moore and Mr. Mac. Reader, what's up, Mac? What the fuck is up? What what, what you up? saying? What is up? I tell you what's up. <laughs> I always say that. Don't you, you, what, what you say, what you saying? Well, do you know, there's no comeback. To what are you saying? There isn't. Is well, there? now every time I say right. what are you saying to someone, like, well, what are you saying? <laughs> anyway, I tell you what I'm saying. I'll what are you, you saying? I've just seen something on um, the gram mm. that fits perfectly with what we're going to talk about today, uh, which is fitness, energy, being fat being out of shape, dad bods, et cetera, et cetera. I've just seen a, a, a photo on Instagram that, that a, a lot of the guys that I follow and who follow me are talking about, and that's this thing, Zac Efron on Netflix. Um, I'm pretty sure he's not a dad. And I don't think he's him, a dad. Nah, and no. they're calling him, basically, his body looks different than what he did when he was fucking 18 and shredded. And he's still he's fucking dad jacked. Bod. Dude, he looks, he's pretty fucking yacked. So we're going to be talking about a little bit today about... Um, not even fitness, but just body image about the importance of being in shape and being what I'd call healthy mm. um, physically because there's no doubt about it. And I mean, we talk about this. Um, we talked about this with Tyson Fury. And I'm sure we'll talk about with almost every guest the importance of taking care of yourself physically and how that rubs off on you mentally and how there's like a synergy between the two. Because for me, when I was out of shape mentally... I was also out of shape physically. And my journey has been a long one, and even one now that I would say is not um, over. It's not over. It's never over. Um, it's not over because you think about this, right? If you are, your body is kind of the vehicle that drives your life. And if you're anything like me, and a lot of the guys that I work with, we're kind of trying to, grow these businesses, not necessarily grow our families, but grow as men and not just fucking um, uh, with ways. <laughs> not just with ways, but also it, you're the, your body is the vehicle that you kind of lead your family with. You lead your staff with, you lead your clients with, you lead your friends with. And it's basically the thing that you have to live in every day. <laughs> Do you know That's what I mean? how it works. So, so what I say to a lot of guys, listen, you can't, if you don't feel great, you can't be great. Um, and I'm sure I'll give some opinions that piss a lot of people off today. But hey, listen, um, if you don't like it, um, you can eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> the, them people who don't like it are probably the ones that most are going to need it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It. So my journey was, um, again, we're going to go back to that time in Marbella where I was probably my most out of shape by far. I mean, listen, if you're in Marbella and you're drinking, snorting coke, eating fucking um, those Spanish omelets, you know those Spanish omelets? <laughs> That's what I used Amazing. to eat. The ones with loads of potatoes in that you get in a plastic yeah. wrapper. I get them from Little all the time. Yeah. They're all are amazing. Uh, I, I used to microwave them every morning and then I'd be <laughs> drinking about 20 fucking espressos a day. Um, yeah, so back then I was out of shape. And, and again, the reality was, the crazy bit is that I was friends with some of the best fucking trainers in the world. Why guys write me programs. And here's the worst part of it. I knew what to do. Yeah. Like, And it's like I said, when I was at my lowest, after I'd been a Wake Up Warrior where I knew what to do and I just wasn't fucking doing it. It was the same with fitness. So not only was I out of shape, as a former personal trainer being out of shape, it was even worse. Knowing what to do made it even worse. Do you, do you think that had an impact? That being yes. the, yeah? Yeah. How big yeah. of an impact? A huge impact because I didn't have the excuse of, I didn't know what I don't to do. know what to do, yeah. I knew but exactly do, what to do. do. Do you think it that kind of label of being a PT as well though? Like yeah. mentally? Yeah. yeah. I remember seeing a comment from someone um, that hurt quite a lot. And I was, I just moved to Marbella 
and someone that I know had said something that I took. And by, by, by the way, back then I was triggered as fuck and thought everyone was talking about me. And I seen this comment that was like, never trust a fat personal trainer. And apparently it wasn't about me, but I fucking went off on one with them. If the shoe fits, isn't ah, it? Ah, dude, and this was me, this is what I was like back then. I'd go off and I'd call people out on the internet and shit. I'd be like, if you've got a fucking problem, come to my fucking house and we'll sort it out. <laughs> That's what I was like back then. I was so angry. Yeah. And I took this comment quite literally and that kind of, and even back then I was a victim. Like, I'd be like, oh, I'm such a fat personal trainer. And I, even, I wasn't even training people then, but uh-huh. listen, I'd let my body go. I'd let my mental health go. And... Again, I had this guilt because I knew what to do and I just couldn't do it. Um, and here's how crazy it is. When I came back home, because of my contacts and because of what, what, what I could do, is I actually, next to the old little office that we call Frittle's Basement, it was disgusting, honestly. This is how mad it was. I'd be doing online trainings and I'd be that busy that I'd need a piss, so I'd just piss in a bottle. <laughs> Who and I just, someone told us about that. I would that. just leave the pissy bottle yeah. every day as it would be Leslie. Or maybe Michelle. I think it was Michelle. Michelle. Yeah, it, was. Massage. it was. M- Michelle. Massage Michelle. Um, it was. Yeah, pissy bottles all over the place. <laughs> That's how disgusting I was then. But in the, I actually used to have the unit next door. Um, and we used to store them in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I actually... Um, a friend of mine, Gregory from Black Box Fitness, he makes fucking amazing fitness equipment. He actually kitted out an entire gym for me. Really? Yeah. For free. Shit. Squat rack, treadmill, dumb, a full set of dumbbells, you know, um, a glute ham raise, tricep, everything that I could ever want to get in shape, I had. And Didn't I still couldn't it. get in shape. Yeah. And and again, that's so hard because I know a lot of you guys listening, there might be some of you guys that are in shape and there might be a lot of you guys that struggle with this. And I think part of the reason was, was because I was out of shape. Because when you're out of shape, everything's fucking hard. Yeah. Everything's fucking hard when you're out of shape. So A, it was hard, and B, and looking back at what I do now to stay in shape and to get in shape, I was on my own all the time. And I came from this, that period of my life was a lot about isolation. I mean, I'd, I didn't bother with most of my friends then because I bought into this fucking, you're the average of the five people you surround yourself with. I bought into the, oh, people are negative. What's thing. your thoughts on that, on that whole well, <laughs> I, th- I think it's important who you surround yourself with. Yeah. That's why I joined Mastermind. Yeah. That's why I go to programs. That's why I start our podcast. That's why I'm able to get the people on podcasts that I get. Um, but listen, I spend most of my time surrounded by a fucking 22-year-old <laughs> um, kid from fucking Saima. Saima. <laughs> Saima <laughs> Sledgehammer. <laughs> my wife, uh-huh. seven-year-old and a nine-year-old. Yeah. That's m- almost all of my time. Yeah. And then a few guys from Jiu-Jitsu. So do I believe in that? No. Do I believe it's important to get around people on the same mission as you? Yes. Do I believe all of those people have to be positive? No. Do I believe there's such a thing as negative people? No. Yeah. And I've made my thoughts on this quite clear and people don't like it. No. Um, I don't think there's such a thing as negative people. I think there are people and negative thoughts about people. Um, I said this to a guy the other day, well, what about the things that they say? I'm like, well, they're just saying things. You're making them negative. Mm-hmm. And for some people, this is probably me about then, complaining is their way of being positive because it makes them fucking feel better. That little, that's the job. Yeah, short term relief. That's the job. I think the problem that we've got is that everyone wants people to agree with them. They want, they want everybody to agree with everything that they say, which means that if I'm being positive, you have to be positive. Yeah. And also, you've also got to consider that somebody's got you got to keep your fucking feet on the ground. And maybe it's those negative comments that, that help keep your feet on the ground, that keep mm-hmm. you grounded, keep, yeah. you, keep you humble. That's why I know, and John, uh, John Martini said this to me, he said, Paul, listen, as long as you're addicted to praise you'll attract more criticism. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. If you think you're going to get praise without criticism, you're deluded. If you think there's going to be positivity without negativity, you're fucking deluded. If you think there's going to be support, if you think everybody's going to support you and no one's going to challenge you, you're fucking deluded. Stupid. So I don't believe in negative people. I just believe there are people and negative thoughts about people. Does that mean you have to be friends with everyone? I'm like, no, it doesn't. But what it means is that I'm no longer the guy that avoids situations because there might be someone there that doesn't agree with everything that I say. I see this all the time. And I hate it when I see things like, cut all these toxic people out of your life. Trust me, as someone that's already done that, that is the path to fucking loneliness. Yeah. You know, a lot of these entrepreneurs that say that, they don't have any fucking friends. Yeah. It's what, what gets me, these fucking, all the Instagram quotes and everything. It's ah, like, bro. all these lone wolf fucking, it's... Yeah. Yeah, and, and you, the, m- what, what's what's interesting is something that I see, especially from some of the guys where it's like no negativity here, zero negativity. Yeah. 
positive vibes only. Yeah. And then the next post will say, men, speak up. <laughs> it's part of the reason why it's men crazy. won't speak up because I'm, if I'm speaking up, trust me, I'm saying fuck all that is positive. I'm going to bring negativity to you mm-hmm. or what you frame as negativity when you're telling me to speak up. So what I've got to say to all those people is make your fucking mind up. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it is Zero, No negative vibes, positive vibes only. Well, okay, but at the same time, you're telling men to speak up and talk about their problems. Mm-hmm. Talking about your problems for most people is deemed as negativity. So yeah, it's a funny old thing. Um, so that was me, isolated as fuck, trying to get in shape. And again, part of the problem was what I knew. Because I knew I'd get in shape. And actually, I was stubborn as fuck. Mm. So we've all heard of the term clean eating. Mm-hmm. Where you eat clean, no carbs, no fucking, sh- sorry, no wheat, no dairy, no sugar, no alcohol, all that stuff. That was me. That was what I believed in uh-huh. before I got fat. But I couldn't fucking do it anymore because I like delicious shit. And then I remember reading an article by a guy called Mike Samuels. Mike's actually a copywriter now. Mm-hmm. And he wrote an article called How I Got Fat Eating Clean and How I Got Shredded Eating Pringles, Harry Bow, and Ben and Jerry's. What a life. <laughs> that changed my fucking life, dude. That article changed my life. And that started something that's now known as flexible dieting, which is essentially just the only way to lose weight is by lowering your calories, yeah. being in a calorie deficit. And that means, and that changed my life. No shit, that changed my life for getting in shape. Um, so I, I read that and I started to think, all right, well, that means that as long as it, back then it was called If It Fits Your Macros, now it's called flexible dieting. Mm-hmm. And James... James Smith calls it calorie fucking deficit or CFD, right? It's all the same thing. And the only way you could make that clean eating work for you is, because there's no doubt that eating healthier is better than eating shit. But if if you're eating too many calories, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. I'd be fucking eating two avocados a day, fucking peanut butter <laughs> and all that shit, and wondering why I wasn't losing weight. Yeah. But like, I mean, healthy, why am I not losing weight? And then I discovered this thing, but well, actually, does that mean I could eat a little bit of what I want to eat? And as long as I use this thing called my fitness pal, I get in shape. And then I started losing weight. Mm-hmm. Right, then I started losing weight. When when was this? <sighs> when when nice. were you at your heaviest? Probably when I just got back from Marbella. Like 2015? Uh, 2015. No, I, I came back in 2014. Uh. 2014. So 2014, 2015. Say the start of 2015, that's probably my heaviest. And, and what was that? 18 stone. About 18 stone. Uh, it's funny, you know, I don't have any many pictures for that from then. Really? Well, when you're fat, you don't like any yeah. photos, anymore, bro. <laughs> Yeah, it's a funny thing. A lot of guys that have been out of shape will tell you that. When you're fat, you don't like getting your photo taken. So I have a few. Um, in fact, I probably got one from 2015 that I would use in a before and after photo. This is how fucked up I was. I was wearing Cookie Monster pajama bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> do you often look back on them? N- oh. Not that one in particular because no. it's fucking unforgettable. But no. I do like a before and after photo. Yeah. I do like a before and after photo. I think it's uh, it's it's quite More great written, to look back it? like that. Yeah. But then I remember... I was still struggling to get into the training um, unless I was walking. And I'm, I'm a big fan of walking to clear your head, to, to, to just get in your own space. And as you know, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you know I'm a big fan of fucking recording videos when I'm walking because I'm just in a creative space. Now, even coaching calls, I'll, you'll never catch me doing a coaching call just sitting down like a one-to-one call, ever. Yeah. Ever. And obviously walking is also a great way to fucking burn some calories. Yeah. Low impact. However, I was still struggling with the training then. Um, I just didn't like it. And even now, mate, I still don't like weight training. I don't know what you're like. You've only just started it, right? I've literally, this. I think before this week, the longest I've been to a gym ongoing. You came with uh, me one time? Yeah, but once. <laughs> <laughs> but the longest ongoing I've had is probably two weeks at is a it? gym lifting weights. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's not my... Well, I, I, I don't know. It's not kind of boring. Yeah, it's look, kind of boring. It's not I, the I, same as. What I like having about. an objective to do. Yeah. So like that's why I enjoy fighting so much because you're doing something. Your yeah. mind's occupied. Yeah. Whereas if I'm lifting weights, I'm just. I just check my fucking phone. Yeah. Out, I'm just lifting weights. Yeah. I know. I only bang some music on and then I'm. I, it's, yeah. Nah, it's not fun. Well, back then I had two problems. One, I was on my own. Mm. Two, I felt fat, so I couldn't go to the gym where I could, and I didn't want to see people either. Yeah. That's. I mean, why else would I build my own fucking gym? Yeah. I remember one, in fact, I remember, this is mental, this is a blow your fucking mind. On that Christmas day, Leslie, this is fucking mental, this, I've only just remembered this. I've never even thought about it since. On that Christmas day that I talked about on episode one, where the suicide watch team were at my house telling me to get my shit together, um, later that day, Leslie left the kids and her mums. Her mums? Her mums. You're getting that, that's very, for, uh... That's for our guys that are not from the fucking <laughs> northeast. 
Og moms. Hvor, hvor er det, de sagde, jeg er sejt. Sejt, ej. Og moms, ja. Yeah. I, call, I call her on my cell phone. <laughs> you used to, you used to. Så so, Leslie um, left the kids at her mom's house, and actually took me into that gym. Mm. Won't you just remember that? She said, you need to get some fucking anger out. Really? So we had a punch bag hanging up, and I fucking mashed that punch uh. bag. It was weird. I mean, I was gassed after about 20 fucking seconds, but... Anyway, so that was that. And then I had a friend of mine who'd started boxing. Um, Steve Grimm, he's called. And he's bust my nose more times than anyone else, actually. <laughs> he has bust my nose more times than anyone else. I haven't sparred with him for ages, though. He hits very fucking hard. Anyway, Steve got in unlicensed boxing, stopped a few kids, um, and he did a boxing size course. He taught me mm-hmm. about boxing. And I, I was lucky enough to... Well, not lucky, it's through... through networking etc i know the guy that owns boxer size the biggest boxing company in the world and andy wake and um, put stevie on a boxer size course anyway he came back and he wanted to show me some stuff and i kind of played with it a little bit before and he took me on the pads and i fucking loved it i was like this is the fucking thing for <coughs> me and it's mad how out of shape i was i could do three one minute rounds with a minute to rest so he used to come and pt me for like 10 minutes I'd do a little warm-up I'd hit the pads for a minute, have a minute off, and I'd do that three times, and that was it. Isn't that mad? It's crazy now, mate, I could twa- I could spar. I could probably do between 10 and 12 three-minute rounds now, sparring. It's, mate, it's crazy. I think when, yeah. when I first started um, like boxing, yeah. and when I first done my sparring rounds, I remember shitting myself yeah. doing a, a three-minute round. Yeah. I, li- I was so scared. Yeah. Yeah. And I think now, obviously, the training we do now... It, do it, but... Uh, It's kind of like I think it's more mental than actual physical. Dude, it is because you 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 kind of. Well, dude, here's the thing, right? So we did the pads, and then he was like, "Let's start sparring," right? And when I started sparring, that's when I was like, "Ooh, this is fucking." Two things, it's fucking terrifying. Yeah. But it also made me feel alive like nothing before had. Yeah. So this is the thing that I remember speaking to Garrett that year, and I said, "Mate, I can't stop snorting fucking coke." I said on a weekend, I kind of get why I do it, mm-hmm. but I couldn't understand why I was doing it in the middle of the day mm. in my office. Mm. Full fucking gram of coke through the day, and then I'd go home with my wife and kids. Leslie knew. She threatened to leave me at one point, and I never felt that feeling doing anything else than when I started fucking sparring. And that was like, holy shit, this is fucking terrifying and amazing. There's something about it. Yeah. I always remember the first time I got hit with a fucking body shot. I thought <laughs> I broke my ribs. First time I got really hit... You know, like with the left hoop, you yeah. fucking live out. Oh Not my nice. god, I thought I brought me ribs. Yeah. Um, and then I sparred with him for ages. <coughs> I thought I was getting good. And then I started sparring with someone. That's when it gets challenging when you spar with people who you don't know. Yeah. That's when I started thinking. And then I'd, I'd like quit after a round. But then I realized it wasn't because I was unfit. It was just because I wasn't fucking breathing. Yeah. And I wasn't relaxed. And I was worried about what was going to happen. And then that just started me on a journey of boxing. And then I fucking next thing you know, I'm fucking... Probably four stone fucking lighter. So when when was it they started? 2015, 2016. I think I had my first. Well, fight I was gonna say when did I have 2017. 2017. Shit. I had a fight. Like two. Well, that was on Wardy's show. Where were you? Were you training? Is it Horton? Is that where you were nah, training? Nah, I was training, um, in my office. Just right. by yourself like, on the back. the ring. Uh-huh. Before the ring, we used to move the tables out of the way. I was. I'd never seen that ring. Yeah, we used to spar in that the little cesspit. Really. Because we didn't have all the seats in. Right. We just had a desk. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> in so the corner. Just, yeah, yeah. We used to just spawn there. And then I went to Brinkburn School. Old school. They've got a ring upstairs. The yeah, hottest I've place. Been, I think I've been there. It's the hottest pla- place on earth. Is it? There was me and Stevie used to train and then one other lad. And then I saw a thingy for a show. And I was like, fuck it, I'm going to do this fucking show. No head guard. Um, it was 16 ounce gloves because the kid had fought, fought in 16 ounce gloves. And then I experienced something that you know about, which is getting your fucking hand raised in the ring. Holy fucking shit, mate. It's a, yeah. I won this belt. I went out after and I wanted to wear the belt. <laughs> <laughs> I won this belt for my first fight because this show had just fucking started. It was Bry Houseby. Yeah. Bry Houseby show that we're talking about the other day. And um, that was fucking it for me. That was me fucking hooked the boxing. Yeah. Um, and, and what I found, and this is why we're talking about this is, what I found was a type of exercise that wasn't a fucking chore, that wasn't on my own. So I didn't feel isolated. I never had to force myself to go boxing, which is a huge deal because if it requires motivation, and listen, sometimes you have to eat shit, right? Yeah. Sometimes I'll go to a jiu-jitsu class and it's something that I don't like doing, takedowns, for example. <laughs> Any kind of wrestling, I'm like, eh. 
too hard for me, that. But anyway, anything that you have to force yourself to do, that you feel obliged to do, that requires willpower. And again, sometimes you do have to eat shit, but if you had to do that all the time, it's a fast track to being fucking miserable. And that's why I couldn't get in shape before. Not because I didn't know how to, not because I didn't know what to do, not because I didn't, not because I did not want to, but because I was trying to do something that I didn't fucking like doing. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can't keep forcing yourself to do shit that you like. And I see it in my book, which you can get at um, paulmo.uk, FYI, world class <laughs> seed. Um, I see that in my book. You can't live a life that you love doing shit that you love. And even then, in any kind of bodybuilder, I'll tell you this, there's no happy ending to an unhappy journey, right? Um, and it's why so many boxers struggle because, and we, we talked to Mr. Fury about this, like, Mr. Fucking Fury. Mr. Fury. School, <laughs> and anyway, we talked to him about this, and he was, if you hate the camp, like if the camp's a fucking nightmare, yeah. the fight is a relief, and then that's why when boxers balloon up in weight. He even said that. Now he like loves the training, yeah, and the fight's a bonus, which I was actually really fucking I was as well. That, yeah. that blew my mind a like bit. Like he likes training more than fighting, which I think for most people... Just like an add-on, isn't it? Unheard of. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so that was me in boxing, and I think, like I say... I found something that I loved. I found something that I didn't dread doing and that I looked forward to doing, which made getting in shape easy. Yeah. The training was hard, but it was easy because I never had to force myself. So at this point, I had a type of training that I loved and a type of nutrition that was, again, still required some discipline, but not that much. So if you guys li listening in, I suppose my number one take home here is when you're trying to get in shape, and a lot of you guys will know this because a lot of you guys listening may already be in shape. But for you guys that are not, one, you got to find something that you like doing. Whether that's boxing or walking. Whether that's jujitsu or fucking taekwondo. Whether that's going to the gym or riding your fucking bike. Who knows how many people are riding bikes these days? <laughs> I started at lockdown. Since <laughs> lockdown, I think I've noticed. It might be because where I live on a beach, there's so many people out cycling, it's yeah. mad. A lot of my mates are cycling just because they're so fucking old that their knees just hurt when they run. I think I think lockdowns give people a chance to kind of. I think there's more people exercising. Than yeah, ever. like well, they've, they've, they've kind of give everyone a, a moment to breathe and and it definitely for me as I say I was pedaling to work every day, wasn't I? Yeah, I've been doing loads of riding, but not on a bike. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> but yeah. no, what 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 you're saying is like there's there's so much the, there's so much option to do what you want. You so don't need do. like I don't. I don't need to weight train. I mean, I'm doing it now because I want to yeah, now. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I, I first played football for 14 years. Yeah. Then it was then it was boxing. Then went rugby. Yeah. Now MMA. And yeah. I, I fell in love with MMA. Yeah. But it took me 17 years to find... I'm, I'm, I'm actually going through this with the kids at the minute because fucking Max, my son, hates exercising. Yeah. Like he's a fucking gamer. Yeah. So we're having to find things that he likes doing. So he started doing jiu-jitsu. Loved it. Now fucking hates it because he started getting beat up. Mm -hmm. Now, and now he's doing, um, we're trying to get him into football so many times. Part of him wants to like football, but he fucking hates it. Like, I can keep, I keep, he keeps trying to have a go at it and then because he's not very good at it, mm -hmm. he's like, nah, it's not for me, dad, I hate yeah. it. Plus, gaming's easy, right? So then he's now into parkour, which is great and today we've had him out fucking running. He doesn't mind, he doesn't mind doing weight training, like throwing kettlebells about and that. And you know what the kicker is for him? He needs music on. Really? If there's music that he likes, he gets into it. Mm. Don't like ever underestimate the power of music. I mean, if you've ever trained jujitsu with your mates and there's no music, it's, it's super weird. weird. <laughs> listen, listen to it. Listen to your mates grunting and on breathing each other. In your ear at the same time as um, sweating on you is just fucking yeah, super weird. It's a bit. So, um, yeah, so you've got to find something that you love because then that makes getting in shape just more fun. Yeah. And like, it's not just about losing weight. It's not just about losing body fat and looking better. It's just about the process having a as body well. that serves you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. what we do now, and again, I'm talking to you modern men out there, dads, businessmen, it requires fucking energy. And if you're putting shit in your body all of the time, and this was me, you put diesel in a petrol engine that can't operate properly. And that was me way back when I was putting shit in my body and wondering why I felt shit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And when you feel like shit, the problem is, is... A, you can't perform to a high level inside of your business. B, you're just a fucking dick. You're a dick around your kids. You're a dick around your family. And I just felt like I wasn't a good example. Mm -hmm. And one of my biggest things now is I want to feel great when I'm around the pool. That's what kind of kick-started me this quarter because I was, at the start of lockdown, I was fluffy as fuck. I was probably, when I was six kilos heavier than I am right now, 
and this is it doesn't do me any but when I posted before and after four of my lockdown they're like oh you look great before <laughs> I mean, mate, you didn't get it. I feel better. <laughs> yeah. When I look better, I feel better. Yeah. Period. It, the, the, I, um, so when I was working in the factory, mm-hmm. you, you mean day to day, you, you've got to do what you've got to do regardless. Yeah. And I, I used to think this all the time. I was, I was, so I'm doing this job and it's hard for me. And I was young, yeah. fit. Yeah. What are these people who are slightly bigger? They, like how much harder must it be for them? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I so yeah. I, it's, I, I mean, I'm Trust not. Trust me, when you're out of shape, and, and again, it's I'm not just everything. talking about being fat here. Yeah. I'm talking about lethargic, tired, lacking energy. Yeah. And let's fucking face it. Let's talk about being fat because it's hard. Yeah. For me, I lack confidence. I didn't want to take my shirt off anyway. I hardly have any photos. My sex life was like, I feel like a fat fucker. I would have to turn the lights off. I felt like a terrible example of my kids telling them that there should be exercise when I wasn't. And I just felt like all of this shit was, it just added to the challenge mentally and, yeah. and listen again some of you guys out there may cover it up with humor or whatever you want some some of you guys might and i mean i know a couple of guys who like to be called big so and so it's part of that fucking identity but yeah. trust me it doesn't fucking feel great so step one um is you got to find a type of exercise that you love and a type of diet and that you could i could see myself sticking to this this flexible dieting thing forever because all i know is if i get a little bit fluffy i just have to knock a few calories just off and track what up. i eat yeah Cut out, cut out some shit. That's it. So yeah, I think I think we um we get lost in the importance of being in shape and what it takes to get in shape. Because and again, I'm saying a couple of things that I'll say here as well, actually. If you don't think that you can stick to the diet like forever, in fact, if you even have to call it a diet, you're gonna fucking fail, mate. Keep on all that shit. Listen, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a nutritionist. But I was a personal trainer for a few years. I know hundreds, in fact, I know thousands of personal trainers. And I'm a guy that's been in shape, out of shape, in shape, out of shape. So if it's going to be keto, don't bother. You can't stick to it forever. Yeah. Don't bother. If it's going to be meal replacements, don't bother. You'll lose weight, but you'll very quickly get it back on. Um, and all the personal trainers listen to me like, go on, Paul! <laughs> go on, well, it's son! Tr- it's true because there's so, ma- so many of these fucking fad... Yeah. Bullshit. Bullshit things out there. And it's, I, I think people overcomplicate it too much. Yeah. And where you just, like, I remember when I was, when I was when I was first getting into fighting, I was like, hey, well, what rice have I got to eat? Is it yeah. brown or is it white? Yeah. Just yeah. eat the fucking rice. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I would overcomplicate. Should I have a, a, a two spoons of fucking apple cider vinegar yeah. in me water? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I, w- I was looking up all these mad fucking diets and yeah. stuff, whereas yeah. it's, you just need to take it back to basics yeah. and... and as you say, count your calories and... Count your fucking calories. That's it, literally. Count your calories, give a fuck about your protein, find some exercise that you love, and that's it, really. Yeah. Listen, if you if people are, if you still want to drink on a weekend, drink on a weekend. But one thing I'll also say is that I'm actually going to do a training tomorrow inside of my Unstoppable program on this. Like, if you're on a fucking mission that you give a fuck about, like improving your family life, improving your body, improving your health growing your business, advancing in your career, if you think you can do that whilst fucking abusing your body, you're gonna fucking, you're gonna slow yourself down so much, it is unbelievable. Now, I drank twice um, with you on both of them, maybe. I should remember when we were drinking gin in the office one time. <laughs> that was right before <laughs> lockdown. And then you came over for Leslie's birthday. Yes. I drank twice at the start of lockdown and I felt like fucking shit. And I wasn't even, these weren't all nighters. These were just a few fucking gins and, and pissed. And I haven't drank since then. And there's no way I'd be on the roll that I'm on now inside of my, my fitness, my training, my family life, my energy levels, my overall feeling of happiness. Because that's the biggest thing. The overall feeling of happiness that I've got through having better energy or creating better energy and inside my business and the impact that I'm having, whilst at the same time, getting pissed every weekend. Like, I'm, right now, I'm not even thinking about it because I'm like, I'm not fucking slowing down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And again, I haven't got a problem with it. I don't think, but you know, listen, I say this to a lot of guys, you know whether it's working for you or not. <laughs> you know what I mean? If it's working for you and you're doing all right, great. But if you know that you need to get a handle on it, get a fucking handle on it. The thing is, mo- most Every, every, deep down, everyone knows if they're doing whether it's working, for whether them. it's working or not, yeah. and you can kind of you can kind of tell just looking at people and how they speak and how they carry themselves. If you can't if, stop, 
That's when you know you That's when it's an issue. If yeah. you're like, oh, I can't stop. It's it's Friday night. I can't stop. I can't yeah. help myself. That's actually almost what would a lot of people would call that like a function of alcoholic. Yeah. Like even if it's just on a Friday or just on a Saturday or just on a Sunday or maybe two out of three of those. Am I saying you've got a problem? No. I'm saying that if you're telling yourself you can't stop, then there may be a problem. Yeah. So let's talk about this then. This wasn't on the agenda. This isn't on me. Um, to do. <laughs> five points, that two of which I can't even fucking read. <laughs> it wasn't on my list, but let's talk about this um, getting off the booze thing because we get so many people mm. and I get so many people like, Paul, how do I stop the booze? I just can't stop. I know that I need to get a handle on it, but I can't. Mm-hmm. And these aren't alcoholics. These aren't guys that are drinking every fucking night. Those guys, I'm saying, listen, go to this meeting. Go. Th- these are guys that get to a Friday and they just can't fucking help themselves. Yeah. They're getting four cans on the way home from work because they're stressed out. Then they're texting the dealer. Then they're getting the fucking drop off and then whatever fucking happens. It's almost like, we're going to be talking about in a later podcast, yeah. but routine, the power yeah, of routine. Yeah. And if you're in a bad routine, yeah. it's 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 the exact yeah. same and thing. And we kind of normalize it as well. Yeah. Oh, it's just what I do. It's the weekend. I'm like, and again, that's okay unless you're not making progress in your life. Yeah. And if it's, listen, I'm going to be fucking straight here. If you're anybody that suffers from bipolar, depression, or anxiety... And you're doing that kind of shit on a weekend, you are. I was going to say a fucking twerp. <laughs> you love that word at the minute, don't I you? Mean, twerp, twerp, dork, burk. Anyone inside you're unstoppable fucking, has been called a yeah, fucking twerp. Yeah, you're a twerp. burk. You're a burk. Um, you're a dork. But no, you're asking for trouble. Yeah. You're asking for trouble. Most people's Monday morning anxiety, Sunday night anxiety is just fucking the beer for you. The body's detoxing. It's just choking The body's petrol fucking on. trying to get all that shit out of the body. And the body's reacting because anxiety has its own physiology. Anxiety has its own fucking heart rate. Yeah. Anxiety has its own fucking temperature. So when your body's trying to get rid of all that shit you're putting in, of course you're going to feel fucking anxious. Or you're going to feel low because booze is a known fucking depressant. And fucking coke is a case of what goes up must come down. Yeah, You know what I mean? We talked with Spot Tyson about this. Um, but yeah, I think that, that if you want to get a handle on it, my biggest tips are... You need, and a lot of people are like, I don't even know why I do it. I'm like, no, why you do it? Because it's fucking fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to come on here and say, you're a fucking idiot for doing it, but it's fucking fun. Yeah. And listen, if I had nothing else more important, which is my key point here, if I had nothing else that I gave more of a fuck about, I'd probably drink and do coke every weekend. I'm not yeah. even fucking kidding. Well, that, that's the... Because again, no one really sees it. Yeah. I could get away with it. Yeah. I could sit in the house. What would I get? I'd probably get... Four bottles of Moretti, four cans of Moretti, nice cans. lager, nice cans, cold cans of yeah. lager, right? And then I'd probably get on like a Parma Violet gin <laughs> or a fucking, <laughs> you're laughing at? I'd probably get on, and because I'd be wary of the calories, uh, yeah, right? That's, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I'd get on the gin. Diet or, lemonade. And I'd get a fucking bag, yeah. right? Because no one would fucking know. Yeah. I wouldn't want to go out and do it. No. But the funny thing is, this sounds cunty. Is that a word? Cunty is a word. It is it? now. It sounds cunty, but sometimes I go out in South Shields. You should be, you be drinking that. Yeah. You be drinking that. People say that. Oh, and then they talk your fucking ears off. Really? Oh, I used to get a real bar as a personal trainer. Should you be drinking that? Talk about nutrition. Anyway, <laughs> that's part of the vibe. So anyway, I could do that at home and get away with it. No one would know. However, I've got shit that I give more of a fuck about. Yeah. I don't want to be hungover around my kids at all. My kids have maybe seen me drunk, drunk. Once. Really? I beat in a match. Probably back in 2017. I think it was Boxing Day 2017. So it wasn't even that long ago. I was with my mate Davey Bell. And Davey's a fireman, right? He's like, mm. I think he's 50, right? He's one of my oldest fucking pals. When I was 18, 19, he kind of showed me the ropes and that. We're boozing. And um, Davey can put some fucking drink away, right? Uh-huh. He's only a little fella, but all like, no, all, an old guy that put the booze away. just so fucking I went, hammer them. I went in the match with them on Boxing Day and I tried to keep up with them. It was only about 7 <laughs> o'clock and I was fucking steaming. 7 o'clock. My kids, you should have seen the look at me. And Max was like, Dad, are you all right? I was just laughing at him. Dad, are you all right? And I started to get super paranoid about it. It's the thing you pretend not to be drunk, don't you? And you act more drunk. It's even worse. Wobbling round. It's like your first time you get pissed and your mom's like, have you been drinking? No. No, I'm Let's smell your breath. Let's smell your fingers. (laughs) Mom, no, you don't smell my fingers. I don't smoke. But uh, (laughs) I almost almost made the worst joke. Why do your fingers smell like scampy fries, Paul? (laughs) Been eating prawn crack as well, what do you think? Anyway, that's disgusting, Paul Mort. I'm not going to edit it out, though. Um, however, yeah, so um, I don't like my kids seeing me drunk. I don't like my kids seeing me... By the way, I'm not saying I'm perfect, by the way. I'm fucking human. 
will I drink again? Might. I might. But right now, it's not on my mind. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to Ibiza in two weeks. Yeah. In fact, as this podcast getting released, I'm probably going in fucking three or four days. How come? Um, oh, when it gets released. Really okay. I'm yeah. on holiday. I'm on holiday. Actually, the thing is, I'll probably not even drink when I'm there. Uh-huh. It's me, Leslie, and the kids. Like, I don't. I feel like I don't need to anymore. Yeah. Before it was a release for me. Before yeah. it was a way of feeling something because I didn't feel anything. When I, and the thing is, way back then, I was on loads of fucking meds. I was on lithium, and lithium just fucking turned me into a walking... I was like the walking dead, a zombie. So when I was on lithium, you didn't have highs, but you didn't have lows either. So you were right in just the middle. neutral. Awful. Oh, yeah. dude. I just felt like shit nonstop. No feelings at all. Um, so now I just don't feel like I need it. I don't feel like I need to relieve any stress because I have other ways of dealing with stress. And we've also got to remember, you guys listen and watching, you got to remember that all stress is self-created. Yeah. Other people can do this. This shit can go down at work. This shit could happen with your mom and dad. The kids could be doing this. But it's our reaction to that. That's that's where the stress is. So I suppose you can just get better at dealing with that or find another outlet. And I think that's another reason why I love jujitsu, yoga, boxing so much. Yeah. I'd probably love MMA, but um I can't kick for shit. Yeah. <laughs> just just on them, so what s- s- someone listening, yeah. boozing, yeah. can't stop boozing. What, what, stop boozing. what, what, what is it a replacement? Because that, that a replacement, you kind of need something yeah, to fill that, that gap, don't you? You need, and this is what I found out in lockdown, mate. This is what I found out because I was like, Why the fuck have I drank twice uh-huh. in a row? It's not me that, yeah. Every Friday, even Leslie was like, Yeah, I want to have a couple as well. And Leslie never fucking drinks, and um, I suppose that helps as well, actually. But I realized after the second week. On the Monday or the Tuesday when I came in, I think I probably got through the Monday and the Tuesday was probably a tired Tuesday. <laughs> very tired Tuesday. And I remember coming in and I was like, do you know why it is? Because right now, because right at the start, it was actual, you were literally allowed to go nowhere. Yeah. Right? I was in the office on my own and it was. It felt like I didn't have anything to look forward to. Yeah. And I think that's most people now. They don't have anything else to look forward to other than either getting pissed up in the on house the weekend. or boozing, uh-huh. getting boozed up somewhere else. Um, and again, I haven't got a problem with anyone that does that, but for me, it's just not going to serve me anymore in terms of what I'm trying to do in my life. Yeah. You'd be the same when you got a fight camp coming on and you're yeah. 22. So now it doesn't really make a big difference in your life if you go up. But for someone like me, two kids, wife, building this fucking big thing, trying to have an impact on people, training, trying to stay in shape, I just don't have time for it. So I suppose my advice would be, you have to A, find something that you give more of a fuck about. Mm-hmm. It's one of the reasons why I always try and roll on a Saturday. Because I'm never really tempted to drink on a Sunday. It's always a Friday. Yeah. End of the week. Oh, so like you're thinking, fight. I can't, I'm, I can't so be hungover. I can't be hungover rolling. Role. Yeah, yeah. I'm more interested in that boxing. I'm more interested in even doing shit with the kids. Mm-hmm. And at the end, when lockdown first started, every Friday we'd be like, right, let's go to the movies. Mm-hmm. Easy fucking chill out. Fall asleep watching the kids the shit <laughs> the kids film. <laughs> Or maybe go out for food somewhere. Or maybe Saturday morning we'd be going to fucking do something. Or go and train at SPG, for example. And then that had gone. And do you know what I replaced it with? Chicken and cheese kebab with pineapple <laughs> rings on it. Rastamis. What's up, Rastamis? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rastamis here in South Chicago. That's all I am going to replace it with. And I was looking forward to this fucking takeaway. Mm-hmm. As wild as that sounds. And then obviously I got back training again. So here you've got to find something that you give more of a fuck about. I.e. most men... And again, I've never been a woman, but I'm being assured by the ladies that I've been working with inside of unstoppable28.com, world-class seed, um, that it's the same for women, particularly yeah. once they've had children, they have no mission uh-huh. anymore. Yeah, They have no mission anymore. And what I mean by mission is something that lights your fire, that energizes you, that you work towards. Because I think we get to a certain point in our lives where we stop working towards anything. We kind of settle Get comfortable. We get comfortable. We settle. Deep down, we know that it's not quite good enough. Yeah. But we just replace it with booze. And then our purpose, our mission, just becomes to make it the Friday or make it the yeah. Saturday or make it over two weeks in Turkey where we'll spend that time pissed as well. Again, no problem with anyone that's doing that. I'm not criticizing anyone. But... I think that's where most go wrong, don't they? They, they, get, they get, to get to the weekend and, and the, well, stopping booze and they get in the house and then they just sit and do nothing and then the thoughts that. start coming. Yeah. And, and do you know what's pretty bad for it? And I think this is what happened to me as well. Everyone else was doing it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you're sitting, you're, you're watching everyone pit, else. Yeah. Fire pit in the garden, they were just drinking in the garden and taking photos of everything. Yeah. And I was bored. 
Yeah. I'll fucking be honest. I was bored. I was like, well, what can I do here? Yeah. I've lost all of these. And again, it's first world fucking problems, really. It when is. People were dying and shit. Yeah. I'd lost all the things that I would normally do. I'd lost, I was thrown out of my weekend routines and that. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I was thrown out of that whole weekend routine and what we'd normally do and where we'd normally go. And then um, I didn't know how to replace it. So you, and, and But right now I'm on too much of a mission. Mm-hmm. So I think if you're on a mission and you know that booze is going to slow you down, you're not going to fucking do it. Yeah. Because you can't build something important while putting shit in your body all no. the time. But the second thing is you've got to just replace the actual behavior. Mm-hmm. Like, you're not just gonna let's face it, you're not just gonna fucking stay in and not drink. No. You gotta you gotta be doing something. You're not you are not just gonna sit there watching fucking goggle box um drinking fucking Ribena. So what was it for you to kind of stop the So way back then it was boozing boxing. And boxing? It was boxing. Was it just yeah, boxing? Back, way back when it was boxing. Um I realized that my breathing was terrible. Mm. My nose was completely fucked. I've snorted mm. so much coke. Mm-hmm. I had to, I still have to use this now. I have to put this steroid on my nose. Because I have this thing, I developed this condition called post nasal drip, which basically means that when I lie in bed, all this fucking phlegm goes from my nose, from my sinuses into my throat, and then I start coughing shit up. You've seen me coughing shit up in the gym. I think my coffee. fucking pugs do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I start coughing all this phlegm up, and that obviously stops my breathing. Yeah. Helps. So back then, I realized that back then, and I replaced it with boxing because you got to consider. I was doing the coke for a high, mm-hmm. got the high from boxing, mm-hmm. and then I got sick of getting pasted because I was out of shape. That actually happened again in this lockdown. I've got better at jujitsu just because I got fitter. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't because I'd been boozing and snorting coke and that. It's just I, I wasn't training as hard yeah. as I was before. Um, so essentially back then I replaced it with boxing. Um, and then I suppose over the years I've just replaced it with family shit, jujitsu, yeah. doing something different, going out, 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 out to a restaurant. To the fucking cinema, um, to clip and climb. Well, I haven't been there for ages, actually. Obviously, where's that? It's there's one of the metro centers. One of gates. Oh the shit, I've seen it. I was at the metro center. That's How amazing. weird is the metro center at the minute? There. I was there. Aye. Super weird. Weird. So yeah, I mean, so so two things that I would recommend. Well, it's four things really with getting in shape. And yeah. that one, find something that you love. Two, find a fucking diet that you can stick to uh-huh. fairly easily. That just requires a Simple. little bit of. Dis- what I say about this is the same as I, I talk about with journaling, which we might get into at some point. Journaling, I'm like, if you can't be asked, it's the most important thing I do every day is journaling this fucking um, unstoppable. I almost planet. feel, I'll, I'll literally, wait, I feel lost if I do if yeah. I don't fill it in on a morning. Yeah. I feel like, well, because everything's here. What the fuck am I doing today? Everything's in the drama show. You're yeah. lost. You're lost in your fucking thoughts. But it's like I say, if you can't be asked to pick up a pen and paper, you don't deserve to change. Yeah, you're gonna stay in a drama show. How si- how simple is that though? You got to talk about my fitness pal. Down. This is what I'm saying about my fitness pal. If you can't be asked to just put what you eat in a my fitness pal, you don't you don't value losing weight. Nah, I'm not doing anything that's yeah. listen. My nutrition. I'm doing about two thousand two hundred calories a day. I eat fucking ice cream and cereal every day. Uh-huh. No fucking clean eating. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm eating high protein ice cream and I'm eat, but I'm eating Reese's fucking cereal <laughs> puffs. Oh my god. <laughs> Listen, these I things are fucking life changing. Oh, I'm eating like Monster Muncher. Do you know what I'm eating now? Bacon rashers. Yeah, them before. I have. I don't know. Not my go-to. Oh, I love the onion rings, me. Oh, onion rings. Are nice, real nice. Thirty space pence. Space Raiders. <laughs> space Raiders. The bomb eye. Have you ever had a Space Raider sandwich? I haven't, but uh, get on it. Yeah, you'll thank I've us later. Anyone bread. listening as well, yeah, get on them. I've been eating much bread actually. Huh? Nah, nah. I've been eating much bread. Nah, I'd rather have a bag of crisps and a slice of bread. Uh, Same amount of calories. You're right. Yeah. Anyway, so. Yeah, find something, and, and if you can't be bothered uh, to just use a simple app, and here's the thing, you just have to scan the fucking barcode on most things. Like, that's the most simple thing ever. Yeah. And um, that's no clean eating. Mm-hmm. Just literally count your fucking calories. That's as simple as I can make it. Three, you got to find a mission. And I think sometimes you got to find a mission that's more, it's about something else rather than just losing weight. I'm not that bothered about just losing weight. Yeah. I'm bothered about getting better at jujitsu because I fucking love it. Mm-hmm. I haven't talked about that yet. No, I haven't. Um, and it's more about being a good example of my kids. Mm-hmm. It's more about feeling great on a holiday, having the energy to do, because it's important. When you're leaner and when you're lighter, you're in better shape, period. You're, you've got better energy is what I should be saying. Um, and I've just got, so those things are my mission. The weight is just kind of a guidepost on the way. You know what I mean? Yeah. So all of those things uh, and the mission, and again, if you're trying to get rid of a bad habit or a habit that is not useful anymore to you or something that you feel like's getting in your way, you have to replace it with something that you give more of a fuck about and 
just something that actually here's what I haven't touched on. We do those things because we get something from it. Yeah. Booze, you get Short something term. from it. Coals, you get boo coke, you get something from it. Weed, you get something from it. Junk food, you get something from it. Overeating, you get something from it. And you get a benefit. And the reason, and again, I did a whole book on this. You can get it at paulmo.uk. Another world class lead. A very but you can get this book. It's three quid, right? It's called How to End Self Sabotage. And we do these things because we benefit from it. Of course we do. We don't do anything that isn't self serving, by the way. And the thing is, you can get those same benefits from something else that allow you to get better results in your life long term. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the benefit that I got from Coke is that it gave me a high. Yeah. I got that from boxing. The benefit I got from boozing was that it was uh, something to look forward to on a weekend. Mm -hmm. I get that from doing something else With on the weekend. Kids. Kids eating out, take chicken and shish kebab with pineapple <laughs> rings. Um, it may Love. be it may be a fucking Nando's. We drove yeah. all the way to Nando's in Newcastle the other week just for a fucking Nando's. I haven't had a Nando's yet since For a takeaway. And then they close it down again. Really? I had to close it down again a week after. I don't know why. Might be that fart I dropped when I went in. <laughs> um, but yeah, the the I, I got that same benefit from that. And the benefit from boozing for some people might be the it's relaxing yeah. for them. Social as well, I think that's Social's a big... Social's a big one. Well, yeah. it wasn't then. Uh, it wasn't then for me. So um, the benefit that I got was relaxation. What did I start doing? I started having saunas on a Friday night. I started um, watching Ozark. It sound, this sounds small, but you got to consider how life-changing that decision yeah. is. I'm not going to booze. I'm going to do this instead. I'm not going to booze. I'm going to eat a fucking takeaway instead. Even Easy. if it was a pizza, I'm still doing better. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Calories wise and obviously. Yeah. What What would you say to someone? Because um, it happens a lot in my friendship group. I know that for sure. But when it's like, come on, mate. Just yeah. have a drink. Just have a drink. Why not? Dude. Stop being yeah, boring. Dude. I don't get this now. Uh -huh. Because obviously my troubles are well fucking every. Everyone in Shields fucking knows. The, no one in Shields would even say that to yeah. me. And because they know about my troubles. But we've got to consider we do that because we're trying to fit in. Uh -huh. For me, our biggest fear, one of our biggest fears as a human, one of our most primal fears apart from being eaten, <laughs> or am I going to eat, <laughs> like predator and prey is being ostracized from the tribe. Right. Like being thrown out of the village. Yeah. And that's it. That's like the primal thing. Mm -hmm. That's why we shouldn't care about what people think. We always care about what people think. Yeah. Anybody that doesn't, is a fucking liar. Yeah. Like, I say this all the time. If you have to keep saying, I don't give a fuck what people think, I'm like, you do. You know how I know? Just by saying that. Because you wouldn't have to tell me. <laughs> Why are you telling me that yeah. then if you don't care? Yeah. Um, anyway, so what do I say about that? Well, you got to consider why they're doing it, first of all. It's not personal. They're not trying to pressure you. They're just trying to make themselves feel better to justify their behavior. Because mm -hmm. deep down, they know it's not productive for them yeah. to do it. And because... Maybe they want you to feel like they fit in with you. Mm -hmm. So we'd only drink when we don't really want to, to feel like we fit in. But they're also trying to fit in with us. Yeah. So it's like a cross thing. So I'm actually thinking about trying a non I've never had a non alcoholic beer. Really? I've, I, I haven't either, to be never. fair. I've had a non alcoholic spirit. Like there's this thing called Three Spirits. I think it's called. Ryan got us onto them. I, quite I like, haven't had them. I quite like. I've had a couple, but I've never had a non alcoholic beer. And I'm yeah. thinking about giving it a go. Um, but I'd rather I'd rather just drink water. I've, I've, I, 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 don't, water? I don't drink pop. Is I, it? Nah, I don't drink. Well, I, I'll have one. He definitely he doesn't drink sparkling water. He has an oh. interesting fact about Mac Reader. He said to me, Do you know what? I hate sparkling water. It makes me mouth dry. Listen, if anyone's watching and you know exactly what I mean, <laughs> message Mr. Paul Moore and Dude, say, Mac's how fucking right. Something that has the word water in make your mouth dry. It's like. By default, it's liquid. No. That does, no. You're thinking about that time you put cinnamon on a phone and a spoon in you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys that are on the YouTube channel, by the way, it's probably on this same channel. Yeah. We'll have to put a video of when I made the kids do this challenge and Nina <laughs> ate cinnamon and it's broke her heart live on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. She, she started crying on YouTube. I felt like it was really? some kind of child cruelty thing. Jesus. Right. Right, so what would I say about that? Well, listen, you can choose to join in if you want. Yeah. But most of the time, this comes back to what we said in another podcast where we talk about modeling behavior. And we're just trying to imitate the people around. We're trying to fit in with them. But then at the same time, you've got to be thinking, well, do I want, what's more important than me fitting in on my mission? If you've got a mission, like if you, for example, if you were fucking training for a fight, yeah, there's no way you'd be doing no. it. If there's no mission for you, if you're just kind of, not wandering, but if it's just like you're, you're through a maintenance phase, you can, it's easier you're to get pulled. Yeah. You're going to not be that yeah. bothered. Um, 
if I'm in a maintenance phase, maybe I'm not that bothered, but I don't really have maintenance phases. Yeah. Um, and again, every, you've got to consider, everyone's just trying their best. Mm -hmm. So even if you do succumb to that kind of, I don't think it's such a thing as peer pressure. I hate saying that. Because again, I think that's an out for people. Mm. I think it's an out or give in to peer pressure. I think that's yeah. just an out. Like, even if you do like kind of give in to that, don't beat yourself up. Don't beat them up for trying to do it. Just be like, everyone's just trying their best. What would your advice be to so, so let's let, making this character here? Yeah. Someone boozing all the time, every weekend, yeah. uh, even through the week, maybe. Yeah. What would you say to um, when they do? Would you would you say go cold turkey or would you say Ooh, that's a great or question. if the, if the, if so say they did have a one day off because yeah. that's what normally happens they have one day off yeah. and then that's it the spiral starts yeah. how would you handle that well so they got it that's a fucking great question mate I'm a cold turkey guy are you I'm never having one pint yeah. two pints yeah it's not I don't see the point yeah. Beer doesn't even taste nice. No. <laughs> <You're> fucking right. <laughs> you know I mean? I'd, I'd say it. Everyone, I'm, I, ne I never, I never go for a pint. Yeah, I just buzz it. No. Would you go for a pint? No, mate. I'm either gonna get wasted or I'm not coming. Yeah, yeah. same. And by the way, if I have one pint, I'm also wasted. <laughs> 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 fucking shit. <laughs> I'm shit at drinking. Yeah. Tyson Fury is the same, right? He He's is. like, I'm fucking buzzed after a pint. Well, is he? He's Moretti's his poison, isn't it? Moretti. I think it was Moretti. I. So I. Uh, or might have been Baroni. It was Baroni. Yeah, it I was. Anyway, we. Uh, we, what would I say to those guys? I'm a cold turkey kind of guy, but you got to consider all progress is progress. Yeah. So somebody that does that, it's kind of the analogy that I give them would be like, it's like getting a flat tire mm. and then taking a fucking crowbar and fucking smashing the rest of your car off. <laughs> like, you got to consider, okay, well, I haven't drank for a couple of weeks. I've had one drink, so I'm just going to get back on it now. Yeah. Like that's, so that's, that's, where that's comparing progress with perfection. Like, oh, I've still got this to do. It's kind of like, well, okay, I've done... I kind of, you didn't fuck up, but you just made a decision that at the time you saw as beneficial. Yeah. This was me, by the way. I'd be, oh, fucked up so bad. I drank last night. I did this last night. Oh, fuck. It's kind of like if I do jujitsu and I get fucking on board, I can beat myself up about it and be like, well, listen, what, how could I deal with that better next time? Yeah. So, question that we ask every day in the planner mm -hmm. what could I have dealt with better today? Yeah. That's the kind of thing that I'd be asking. Listen, what did, a, what did you get from it? What did you get from it? You clearly got something. Well, I had a good night. Yeah. Uh, what didn't work the way I feel like shit today? How could you deal with it better next time? Mm -hmm. That's how I... Mate, mate, no shit. This is how... It's not just from studying and having mentors and having coaches and going on courses and reading and audio books and podcasts. All this... Most of the stuff that I know and that I'm able to advise on now is actually just from asking me, myself, and doing these exercises. That's how I figured out how to end self-sabotage. Mm -hmm. That's how I figured out how to change my habits. Not from... Necessary from reading books. I think reading books is important, but I'm actually, yeah. I don't read that much. I don't read books. I read my journal. Yeah. You'll never learn more than from the shit that comes out of your head and on paper. That's, you're digging for gold. You're getting raw material about yourself, mm -hmm. about how your fucking mind works. That's what's so important about journaling. And you, you get that raw material and you suddenly start to figure out how you, what makes you tick. Yeah. I know what makes me tick. Which is why I'm now able to do inside of this business. We talked about when we talked about why we start the podcast. I know what makes me tick in business, and it isn't doing fucking PowerPoint slides. <laughs> you know I fucking I mean? know about it that. It isn't sending people <laughs> fucking passwords for the fucking website. Yeah. It isn't dealing with fucking people who can't fucking find the audio book. Yeah. People who only get the the, the fucking picture of the meditation. <laughs> <laughs> the PNG file. <laughs> Fuck the PNG off. file. That is, isn't dealing with that for me. Um. I know that what doesn't work for me is necessarily going running. I fucking yeah. hate going running. Yeah. Unless I do me one mile test, which that I just do that because it shows me if I'm getting fitter. But what I'm really saying is that I've learned all this stuff about myself and I've learned what makes me tick through just asking myself questions every morning, every night, every week, every month, every quarter, every year, different ones. And I think that reading books is great but you'll never get more insight than from your own journal. And this is one of the reasons when we start talking about mornings and rituals and winning your morning and mm -hmm. setting up your day right, that this is why I won't tell you how to exercise. I'm not going to tell you how to exercise. Yeah. Because what works for you might not work for me. Yeah. What you like might not be what I like. What you value might not be what I value. Yeah. So let's... Shall we talk about fighting? Let's get on We're it. We're only supposed to be talking about fighting. <laughs> We're, anyway, we've, we've had, had a blast. We've had a little yeah. spiral. But a blast. So... Um, Fighting. I asked Tyson this actually about why 
boxing. I know a lot of men who have had, actually not that many of them have kept, kept it up, but have had an experience. They've started boxing. They've taken a white collar match and they've kind of fell in love with boxing. Um, and I've already said why it is for me. It made me feel alive. Yeah. It was a type of exercise that I love doing. It let me let out some of this, what I believe is what a lot of men would call toxic masculinity. Mm. I think men have, well, they have more testosterone than women. Yeah. And we tend to carry around a little bit more aggression than women. Yeah. And I think it's an outlet for aggression. Mm -hmm. It's an outlet for this natural aggression that men seem to have. And again, I wouldn't say I'm an expert on this, but I am an expert on being a fucking man because I am a man. <laughs> I've never works. been a woman. No. Never been a woman. So I think it's a great outlet for men. It's a great way to get in shape. And I think there's a lot to be said for the camaraderie. You're not on your own anymore. Yeah, definitely. I mean, why did you start boxing? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I've, well, I've never really had a father figure in my life. Well, coming in and out some with my um mom's partner. Yeah. But I feel like I've, it's kind of, I've got to, be able to protect who I'm around, yeah. almost. Yeah. But it's also, as you say, a release of yeah. energy. And yeah. Um, but yeah, that that was the main one for me. Being yeah, there's something, if there's something, there's something great about knowing that if shit went fucking sideways. That's what I mean. Like if 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 I'm, I mean, I'm going to get in predicaments. Everyone's going to get in predicaments. People are fucking dicks. dicks. And th it's going to happen. And I would rather be the person that's going to settle the situation yeah. than someone else absolutely mess me up. Yeah. That was the main reason yeah. starting, but now, as you're saying, it is, it's the camaraderie, it's the release of energy, and it's just, it kind of, it, it takes your mind off things. Yeah, that's what I'll say about jujitsu as well, as well as boxing. Boxing start me off, but it's kind of like, people talk about being present, being distracted, not being able to switch off. Mm -hmm. I'm like, these martial arts, and this is why I encourage everybody to, to, to at least fucking give it a go. You will not think about anything else. Well, it's like what we were talking that. about before. You, you, you're switching off the booze and you're thinking about something. You, you're yeah. occupying your mind. It's impossible for a lot of you guys listening to this if you think, I can't switch off. It's because you're trying to switch off. A lot of people that I work with will have creative intellects. There's no such thing as just vegging out in front of the TV. Yeah. Most men that I talk to can't do that. So you have to find something that actually, I'll be sitting there and I'll be like, I did this, I did it to you the other day. I did an escape on Mac yesterday, this escape from Neon Belly. Neon Belly's rank. And I watched it on YouTube because I'd been thinking about it and I was like, Nina was Nina was on my phone doing fucking TikToks and um, I, I just had this vision of Neon Belly. Just I was just thinking. I was thinking about jiu-jitsu rather than trying to switch off. I Googled it on YouTube and it worked on him. Yeah, straight away. It was the first time you tried first it as well, wasn't it? it? <laughs> first time I tried it. I. Anyway, the, um, but these sports for me are more about just getting in shape. You're getting around people that are very similar to you. Yeah. I mean, we've got a couple of guests coming up. Alex Enlin, next cage warriors, world champion, Davey Grant, UFC fighter. These guys are coming up together. And Alex said to me, he said, what we're going to talk about being for a little bit mental. I'm like, yep. That's legit. You've got to be a little bit mental. But at the same time, these things help you get present. You kind of get obsessed. They certainly keep your feet on the ground because there's no egos in there. Seen loads of that's, dormant, that's I've seen a loads of dormant come into jiu-jitsu and never yeah, come back. That's a big one. Keep it like, hu it humbles you. Because what I can't remember who was saying it. I think it might have, I think it was actually Tyson saying most people who have been in a fight yeah. will avoid a fight at any given opportunity because yeah. they know how bad it can be. Adrenaline. Uh -huh. yeah. They know how bad it can end up and they'll, they'll avoid a fight at any any point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The, it, it's um, for me, it's a, It's almost like, and when people ask me, because I get asked all the time in interviews, why do you do jujitsu? Right, it's like violent meditation mm. because I can't be anywhere else. In fact, the other week I rolled with a kid, Connor, and he kept he strangled me twice in a round, and I very rarely get strangled. Do I? Mm. I'm quite difficult. So little, I'm little neck tucker. I'm, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm like Ram Man off He Man. Don't know if you remember him. I was like, I can just took my I can took my chin in. I know I'll defend it, and he strangled me twice in about two minutes because I was thinking about being at the dentist. I had to go to the dentist that day. And that's what's so great about these sports. You switch off or you think about what happened that day or what he said about you on fucking Instagram or what that fucking text you got off your ex. You can't fucking, do it. You can't the be The guy with the big dick off WhatsApp. You can't be thinking... <laughs> you can't ask twice I've mentioned him. You can't be thinking about that at the same time as doing these things. Otherwise, you get smashed. And that's what's so cool about it. You come out and it's like all your troubles have been mm. left on the mat or yeah. left in the ring, Legit. if you like. And then there's, um, and, and again, you just feel alive. There's nothing like rolling around with another man in your underpants to make you feel alive, right, Mac? I, I always used to, when I was boxing, I used, I used to, I remember watching the uh, UFC and I'd be like, 
so boring that on the ground. Well, Tyson said that, didn't he? But once you're actually doing it, it once, it's but it's once you know chess. what they're doing, it's different. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a game. It's a a game of chess. Yeah, and that. it's one of those things where, for me, you said it about improvement. It's one of those things where you're like, I can get better. How can I get better? How can I get better? How can I get better? Well, how, it takes fucking next? ten years what to get a black belt. Well, put this way, I think. I think everybody that tries it and does more than like three or four sessions gets fucking addicted. Addicted, to it. yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a good way of putting you it. Get it addicted is addicted to it. You uh-huh. can't miss it. Even listen, for the first, even now, I sometimes have a session where I'm like, "That was fucking shit." I was, te- in fact, Max said to me the other day, I was ri- whining like a bitch. He smashed me. He's like, he said the most offensive thing he's ever said to me, which <laughs> is like, "You got to remember, you're twice my age." <laughs> I was like, cheers, bro. I, I think he was trying to boost me morale. Meant it in a loving way. I think he was trying to boost me morale. He just shook a shit on me face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for any of you guys out there, listen, I'm, I'm going to highly recommend that, you, that if you're struggling to find something that you love doing, give boxing a go. Give jujitsu a go. I mean, right now, there's really no jujitsu. No. Fair, but give one of these things a go because um, I'm, I'm telling you right now, if you hate going to the gym, if you hate running, if you hate weight training, if you hate CrossFit, one of these things will change your life. In fact, all of if you look, if you give all of those a try as well, because you never know what you're going to fall in love with. The funny thing is, now I don't mind weight training that much, and do you know why it is? Because I'm in shape. Yeah. Like yeah. even running. You're probably can connecting it to the jujitsu out- outcome as well, I aren't can, you? I do. I like. I'm I, can, I can do that one mile run test because it's like well, it's seven minutes right now. Seven mm. minutes fourteen it is right now. I'm aiming for six forty five, and that's a similar kind of time to a round. What of is the, is the world record like? The, oh, like the four three, mi- three, m- three minutes or something. Imagine that. <laughs> I ain't running that ever. It takes me three minutes to run a hundred fucking meters. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that that's kind of. I, I don't think there's anything else I want to add to that. No, I think, think today you you got to think about okay, what are my reasons for getting in shape? What are my reasons for getting in shape? What's the real why? Who else does an impact? If I start getting a handle on my body, if I start getting a handle on my energy, if I start to get a handle on my health, who else does it impact and how? Mm-hmm. What's it going to cost me if I don't get in shape? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like these are these are deep questions that if you think about are dramatic because it's not about the weight. It's not about the six pack. It's about having a body that connects with your mind so that at the end of the day they just feel better because there's nothing more important than how you feel. Legitness. I think and that's that, a uh, brilliant way to wrap it up. Me, me too. <laughs> hey, thank you for listening um, to Paul Moore Talk Shit. Don't forget that if you want to get access to the podcast early. If you want to get access to prize draws, um, check out my books, my courses, and subscribe to my world-famous daily emails. Go over to paulmote.uk where you will find everything that you need, and I might even send you nudes. Adios. Nice one, brother.